good morning students today we are going to discuss about the topic allies first of all we can see the definition for alloy an alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or metal with non metals so what is the meaning of homogeneous homogeneous means you know already you studied in grade 9 the types of mixtures two types of mixtures are there homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures homogeneous mixtures means it is uniformly distributed isn't it the solid particles are uniformly distributed over the solvent and it forms single phase okay heterogeneous mixture it shows two phases and there will be no even distribution of solid particles in the solvent the example for homogeneous mixture you can say salt in water sugar in water etc heterogeneous what kerosene in water oil in water sand in water isn't it so see if you take a salt and dissolve in water it uniformly distribute throughout the solvent and it exists in single phase whereas if it dissolve oil in water it does not blend with each other and it produce two phases and there will be no uniform distribution of oil on the water so that is called as homo and heterogeneous mixture but alloy comes under homogeneous when you mix together two different elements they blend with each other and exist as single phase alloy can be formed between metals and metals or between metals and non metals in both way alloys can be formed and they are homogeneous mixtures the properties of alloys are different from those of its components see for example a gold we know that gold is soft and it is breakable easily breakable in its purest form that is the property of original property of gold this property can be altered or this property can be enhanced the strength can be enhanced by the addition of copper which gives strength to the gold so only we are making alloys of gold with copper clear students the property of gold is enhanced or improved by adding copper so when you mix gold and copper the property is totally different from its original property or from its original character okay and next what is the reason why we are alloying the metals the first reason is to modify their appearance and color see for example stainless steel it gives a good appearance and color because iron is alloyed with the other metals like nickel and chromium which give its a good appearance a shiny appearance and color so to improve the color of the metal we can alloy one metal with the other metal the next one to modify their chemical activity so uh, to modify certain chemical reactions for example most of the metals undergo corrosion so to prevent corrosion the metals are alloyed with the other metals for example iron is alloyed with other metals like carbon and nickel which prevent its from corrosion so to modify its chemical activities then to lower the melting point normally the metals have high melting point when they are alloyed with other elements they have low melting point comparing to its original melting point so to lower the melting point then to increase the hardness it give more strength when to, unity is strong isn't it when two or more metals are alloyed fused together it gives better strength then to increase the resistance to electricity we know that metals are the good conductors of heat and electricity by alloying this property can be changed and that's why we can increase their resistance they are when alloyed metals are resistance to electricity then an important term called as amalgam so what is amalgam so if we are using a mercury for alloying we will call that composition as amalgam so an amalgam is a alloy of mercury with another metal so mercury in which state it exists liquid state so 
when this liquid form of mercury is fused with or alloyed with any other metal then that composition is called as amalgam and how they are fused together means the alloys are formed by metallic bonding that is ionic bonding mercury is alloyed with other element through the ionic bonding that is the electrostatic force of attraction will occurs between the electrons of mercury and the positively charged metal ions the best example for amalgam is a dental amalgam you know that to fill the to seal the cavity in the teeth we use this dental amalgam dental amalgam if you see the composition the composition of the dental amalgam is mercury and it is fused or it is alloyed with silver and tin this composition is called as dental amalgam and it is used to seal the cavity so what is amalgam students if you are alloying mercury with any other metal then that composition is called as amalgam next we can see what are the methods of making alloys mainly uh, there are four different methods in the book where they have discussed about two we can see the two one is by fusion method next one by compressing method fusion method means by fusing the metals together that is uh, the for example if you want to alloy copper and zinc so uh, alloy of copper means take the major proportion will be copper and the less proportion will be zinc take to these metals melt it heat it to its melting point by melting make it into molten state and then this molten content is cooled to room temperature and then it exists as a single solid form and this is called as fusion method okay students so the um, the methods in this method the uh, metals that you want to make alloy are melted by heating to high temperatures they are melted and the molten metals are cooled at room temperature and all these metals exist in a single phase further they are cast into different shapes based on our needs for example you can say brass bronze etc next one by compressing compressing by finely divided metals one metal over the other they will compress by the heavy force and they make it they will blend each other and it exists as a single metal the example for such a model is a good example is wood metal it is an alloy of lead so the major proportion is lead it is alloyed with other metals like so first lead then they will place the tin then it was compressed then by bismuth and next one cadmium powder so all these fusible product is called as wood metal formed by compressing on metal over the other and fusible alloys relatively have low melting point after the fusible alloys are formed their melting point is less than from its original melting point nearly 183 degrees celsius itself they will start for example wood metal they will starts to melt they are called as fusible alloys okay so fusible alloys relatively they have low melting point than its original uh, original properties isn't it In individually lead tin bismuth and cadmium have may have high temperature but after they are formed alloys they are fusible alloys and it has relatively low temperature and alloys as solid solution usually we will form prepare it as a solid solutions in this the composition or the concentration which is present in higher amount by weight is are called as solvent and lesser amount by weight is called as solute okay so for example if you are using brass that is a alloy of copper so copper if it is taken as 80 percentage zinc it will be taken as 20 percentage means this 80 percentage copper is solvent and the remaining 20 percentage zinc is called as solute okay so mainly the alloys are in solid solutions and it may also contain hydrogen is present in the higher concentration they are called as solvent and less concentration is called as solute the next term is types of alloys this classification this type of alloys classification is based on the presence and the absence of ion 
so most of the alloys they contain iron content it then they are called as ferrous alloy then they are called as what alloys ferrous alloy so ferrous alloys means alloy must contain iron as the major component as solvent okay wow. so for examples nickel steel stainless steel etc whereas the non ferrous alloys they do not contain iron as major component for example alloys of copper here copper is the major component isn't it so they are called as non ferrous alloy in stainless steel nickel steel iron is the major component they and they are called as iron alloys or ferrous alloys okay alloys of copper alloys of aluminum are called as non ferrous alloys iron which have iron in major component then that type of alloys are called as which one ferrous alloy so two types are there based on the presence and absence of iron the next one we can see the different types of alloys so in our in your textbook only they have explained three types isn't it three metals extraction so here also we are going to learn the important three metals the alloys of three metals that is copper aluminum iron first one the alloys of copper the major one two are given here one is brass and bronze okay so brass and bronze and its uses uh bronze is used in electrical fittings metals decorative items and hardware since bronze also statues uh, you know the meaning for statues isn't it then coins bells gongs gongs like bell uh, it is in bigger in size okay gongs like quick aluminum alloys duralumin and magnesium are the two important alloys of aluminum and these two are mainly used in aircraft okay aircraft the parts of the aircrafts are made up of aluminum alloy since it is a lightweight compound metal it is used and also the pressure cooker that we are using at home it is a alloy of aluminum aluminum at major composition and it is alloyed with other metals like magnesium manganese and copper similarly magnesium also used in the scientific instruments okay laboratory the scientific instruments are the made up of magnesium the last one is alloys of iron the two important alloys stainless steel and nickel steel stainless steel iron as the major composition nickel steel also iron as the major composition it is intact it was fused with carbon the non metal to prevent the corrosion and also nickel and chromium which gives more strength and more uh, lustrous appearance uh, to this and they prevent the major on corrosions okay the major importance of alloyed metal is they will prevent the corrosion their resistance to corrosion clear so automobile parts very important one word question automobile parts are made up of stainless steel cable wires uh, aircraft parts propellers are these are made up of nickel steel okay so this table or column is very very important okay so page number 119 you should not exclude anything all the topics are very very important so what are the things we today we discussed what is alloy amalgam reason for alloying methods of making alloys the next one what are the types of alloys what are the types of alloys ferrous alloy and non ferrous alloy then the table this table is very important it is alloy of copper alloys of aluminum and alloys of iron the next we are going to see corrosion i said isn't it alloyed metals they are resistance to corrosion whereas the other metals in its pure form usually its characteristics it will undergo corrosion so what is corrosion it is a destruction of metal it's a, the originality of the metal loses isn't it the metallic characteristic is lost due to corrosion isn't it for corrosion we need two important things that is one is air and water in the presence of air and water this corrosion will occur and it's a very slow and steady process it takes long time to make or to the metals to corrode is yes, no in the home you might see if uh, if the metals are not uh, properly cleaned or if it is not what um, if you are not applying oil or grease then that place you can see the reddish brown color layer formed over the metallic rod that one usually we will call it as rust or it is the process of corrosion so it's a slow and steady process and it is naturally occurring process okay uh, in this process while occurring the metals 
okay for example iron or whatever metal these metals can be converted into oxide or it can be converted into hydroxide or sulfide so they will undergo rust formation and it loses its metallic characteristic it loses its original appearance okay see here uh, here is an iron rod okay in which it is coming in contact with air and water so air mainly it reacts with the gas oxygen iron reacts with what the oxygen gas plus it reacts with water droplets and they form a reddish brown layer over the iron rod that is commonly we will call it as rust the chemical name for the rust is hydrated ferric oxide okay the common name for rust that is formed as a result of corrosion is hydrated ferric oxide fe2o3 x molecules of water okay uh, because of this rust formation the metal will lose its metallic characteristic it lose its strength okay it will lose its tensile strength okay so that it is easily get corroded okay so for mainly for this to corrosion to occur we need the two main things air that is oxygen in the air and water okay so in the presence of these two things they will undergo a chemical reactions and they produce a, a brownish reddish layer or the iron rod that is called as hydrated ferric oxide okay uh, the corrosion is in best of uh, this corrosion is in best example for oxidation reaction and the chemical equation for rust formation is four molecules of iron fe plus 3o2 plus and um, the two types of corrosion uh, so just we can see once so types of corrosion dry corrosion means in the absence of moisture whereas the wet corrosion means in the presence of moisture that is the difference between both absence and presence okay absence means it's a dry corrosion or chemical corrosions in the presence of moisture that is moisture means in the presence of water that is water content okay air with water content moisture is called as wet corrosion okay and the dry corrosion mainly it is it is caused by the chemicals the attack of chemicals on the metal that is more corrosive liquid or gases such as oxygen nitrogen sulfur dioxide hydrogen sulfide etc it occurs and this reaction occurs at high temperature all of the gases what i mentioned above is more reactive gas and impart the chemical attack on albumin for example silver spoon you can see after the few days due to the attack of these chemicals they will become tarnished copper after few days because of the rust formation they will produce green color not only iron most of the other metals also undergo what rusting so it may be of two reasons one is maybe due to the uh, presence they are exposing to air and water that is oxygen and water in another case uh, the rust may cause due to the chemical substances that is mainly corrosive liquids or gases mainly the uh, gas which makes corrosion on the metals or oxygen nitrogen sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide due to these reasons also the corrosion may occur so these are the two types of corrosion one is dry the next one wet dries due to the chemical agents such as a uh, corrosive liquids or corrosive gas which imparts chemical change on the metals whereas the wet corrosion is maybe due to the presence of moisture that is what we what we explained first in the beginning that is iron when is exposed to air and water the reddish brown layer that is formed is called as rust okay so the two ways are there and how to prevent this corrosion it is easy isn't it one of the method already we studied that is alloying okay so alloying one metal over the other metal it is a important or important preventive method that is used for resistance corrosion the next one coating one metal over the other metal in this many steps are there first one is galvanization so coating zinc on iron sheets by applying electric current we will coat the surface of the iron with the another one okay coating one metal over the another metal with the help of electric current we will apply a zinc the metal zinc but soldering etc you would have seen isn't it like that coating one metal over the another metal next one is electroplating that also covering one metal over the another by using electric current electroplating is it car etc we will they will give a shiny appearance over that isn't it that is electroplating next one anodizing it is a chemical process that is uh, it is um, aluminum is widely used making a good appearance okay to give good 
attractive color and appearance to the metals we will use aluminium aluminium is we know that shiny or give shiny appearance so with the help of the electric current they will coat this aluminium over the other metal okay the next one is cathodic protection or we can call it a sacrificial protection to protect one metal from corrosion the other metal sacrifices other metal undergo corrosion that is called as cathodic protection okay for example uh, the easily corrodible metal for example iron uh, is um, that is is a called as sacrificial metal to act as anode ensuring cathodic protection it is a method of controlling corrosion of metal surface protected is coated with the metal which is easily corrodible for example one metal is coated with another metal so that that metal will undergo um, corrosions and it prevents just like a painting just like painting okay we will paint the iron rods isn't it so fast what will happen this paint uh, will get to disappear slowly after that only our iron rod will be exposed to air or moisture content so again we will use what apply paints or grease isn't it likewise instead of paints or grease here we are using another metal that metal is corrodible and after corroding that metal only our iron will exposed outside so it will sacrifice itself to protect the iron rod such a type of um, method is called as cathodic protections okay so different types are there one is alloying surface coating means a simple topic in all the method that comes under surface coating is coating one metal with another metal uh, based on our needs by using electric current so different techniques are there if you are using zinc for coating we will say it is galvanization uh, then aluminium means we will say anodizing so one metal over the another metal for example instead of paint and applying grease etc they will um, coat iron with other metal so that metal will be easily corrodible after that only our iron will get exposed so for protecting iron we are exposing another metal to air and water so these are the different types of methods for preventing corrosion students it's a very important question learn this question and learn and write okay these two pages are very very important thank you